today we are going to see how to create these curvy paths. They are widely used in visual effects for games and they can yield some very, very interesting results. And today I'm gonna share with you one of my methods to come up with this path. I made a few extra effects, as usual they are all available on my Patreon page and by supporting me you get access to a vast and huge library of visual effects you can use in your games. Links below. So, without further ado, let's jump right into this. I was doing some healing effects, by the way, and I was wondering would it be cool if I could show you how to create this curvy pass. That's why I made this tutorial and that's why we are seeing all of these healing effects. Let me know if you want to see a tutorial about this, by the way. So, as you might be wondering, we need a mesh. Yes, indeed. But we can start with VFX Graph first. If you want to follow along with the particle system, that's totally fine. As a matter of fact, I have done a video showing you how to convert VFX Graph to particle system or vice versa. Links below, by the way. So once we have VFX Graph created, we can drag and drop it to the scene and then press the edit button to open VFX Graph. In here, the first thing we want to do is essentially say that we want a burst instead of a constant spawn rate with one particle. This is going to be for one of those paths, for a spiral essentially. It's not going to move, not physically. And let's make sure that lifetime is not random like one second, we will see about that in a moment. Down here we don't want a quad because we are going to create a mesh, so let's output a particle mesh. And let's already add a set size with a value of 1. And yeah, as you can see we have this capsule, so let's take care of that, let's replace it. I'm going to use Blender and I'm going to try my best to guide you through. But essentially we want a clean scene, so I'm going to select everything with A and then press delete. And then with shift A, we can add a Bezier curve. And now it's very important that we press 7 on the numpad, so we go to the top orthographic view. So to make our life easier, we are going to create a spiral. It doesn't need to be perfect. And we can do it by selecting this vertex and then with G we can move it around, as you can see. If we want a new point, we can select this one, for example, and then press E to extrude. And then we can select one of these handles and with G move it around so we can fix this curvature. And that's essentially the idea. We are going to fix the handles with G, move them around, adjust each vertex as well, and extrude with E. And the idea is to eventually have this spiral. As you can see, I'm going to speed this up a little bit because it takes some time to create this. Like I said, it doesn't need to be perfect. What's really important is that the first point is far away and the last point is in the center. It will create a very interesting effect. More or less something like this, for example. It's not perfect. Now, if we go to the side views, as you can see, if we move around, it's completely flat. And it should be. Because the trick now is to select the vertex in the middle and turn on proportional editing. You can choose one of these curves and once you press G, you will see this circle and you can scroll up and down to control its influence. And now the idea is to lock it in the Z by pressing the Z key and push it up. Let me just do this on the front orthographic view, one in the numpad, and then with G I'm going to push this all the way up. And at this point I'm going to make sure the first vertex is above the ground, above this red line. And now it, and it's a matter of adjusting these handles so the spiral is a little bit more smoother. Like I said, it doesn't need to be perfect. You can then even come back here and adjust it and export again. But for now, we can press this icon so we can access the basic curve properties and in geometry, we can extrude. We could extrude like this. And this is pretty cool because if you select, for example, this vertex down here and press Alt S, you can scale it down so it's thinner at the beginning and thinner at the end and then you can adjust these handles so we don't have any artifacts but this would be very 2D basically, essentially. To see this in several angles we need to have perpendicular faces along this curve and we can do this by going back to object mode with tab and then we shift A add a plane let's enter its mode 
and I'm going to press Z to see through and we can delete this vertice right here. And now we can select these two remaining vertices and with G push it to value on the Y axis of minus one and then press enter. With this line on the center now we can press shift D to duplicate it and then press escape so it stays in the same position. Disable the proportional editing and rotate it with R on the Z axis a value of 90 degrees. Now you can get out of edit mode and here we go, we have this cross. The cool thing is that we can, with Alt C, convert it to a curve. And why is this useful? Because on our Bezier curve, we can say the bevel is an object and it only accepts curves. You can use this picker to click on the object and here we go. It may look like something crazy like this that doesn't make any sense at the beginning, but if you select this cross now, in object mode and scale it down with S as you can see now you can adjust the thickness of our spiral and this is very important like I said so we can see this in several angles otherwise it would look a little bit flat here and there cool obviously you can still make adjustments but I'm fine with this I'm gonna rename it to spiral mesh 02 because I already have one and then with Ctrl A, I'm gonna apply all transforms. Oh, make sure this pivot is at the bottom, by the way, so you can scale this up and down from this point. Then in File, you can go to Export and in FBX, you want to turn on Selected Objects and down here, Apply Scalings, set it to FBX All. And then I'm gonna navigate to my project to the Models folder and export this. Back in Unity, this is what we got. We can assign it right here in Output Particle Mesh. Here we go. It's sideways probably because of the export settings that I've used. But up here we can use a set angle and say it's minus 90 in the X and here we go. It's facing on the right direction and don't worry if you only see one side of this. It won't make much of a difference because we are going to create our own shader. So we can offset the texture along this path however we want. So in a folder with right click, I'm going to go ahead and create the shader graph and unlit one. I'm going to call it offset shader, for example. And on the graph inspector, let's turn on allow material overwrite so we can control all of these properties directly in VFX graph if we need. Make sure it's transparent and that the render face is both, which essentially means two sided. And very importantly, turn on support VFX graph. Now, it's a very simple shader. For example, we need the basic setup, which is a color and then a texture 2D for the main text. The color it's going to be in HDR mode with alpha 100. And then we can sample the main texture with a sample text 2D. Multiply the color with the texture and connect this to the base color. And since this is vector 4, we can split it so we can have access to the alpha, so we can have transparency. Oh, and you can set the alpha clip threshold to zero. This is the basic setup of most of the shaders. Now, what's super important if you want to animate a texture along this path is to use a tiling and offset node connected to the UV of the sample texture. I'm going to assign a texture just to show you how this works. But essentially, if we play with X, as you can see, we are going to scroll this horizontally. This represents the UVs of our mesh. For example, in Blender, if I quickly open a UV editor here, convert this spiral to a mesh, enter it to mode, as you can see, these are the UVs. This part right here represents the top and this one represents the bottom. And we are going to animate a texture along these UVs. That's what we are going to do here. So let's make sure offset is 0, 0 and to control this via VFX graph, let's create a vector 2, call it the main text offset, connect it here and you can press save and that's it. If you go back to VFX graph, now you can add the shader graph right here. If you don't see this option, you can go to edit preference and in visual effects, you can turn on experimental operator slash blocks you might need to restart Unity. All right, so here we go. We have this offset, which is awesome just to play with this back and forward. As you can see, this is what it does. Now, what happens if we 
assign here a cool texture like this one. Well, first we need a texture, right? So I'm going to use create a, it's a very, very simple texture, guys. I'm going to create a new file with 2048 by 2048 pixels. And on this empty new layer, I'm going to use this airbrush soft with these settings and with a white color opacity of 100 more or less in the middle i'm gonna create this very very curvy zigzag thing i'm just gonna center this with ctrl t but now the idea is to use the blender smear brush with an opacity of around 40 50 and this is what it does it smears it smudges wherever you have painted and we want to do this a little bit horizontally a few times i'm doing this very quickly just to give you an idea of how it works but now the process is to go back to the hairbrush soft use the eraser with an opacity of 40 for example and remove a little bit here and there it's very very much white and we want this to be like a gray scale essentially we want to have black and white and gray in the middle so i'm going to remove a little bit of this excess and that's it I'm going to hide the black background, export as a PNG, very important, rename it, and here we go. I'm going to turn on alpha is transparency, press apply and assign it right here. And this is how it looks. This is the cool effect we have at this point. It's very, very interesting. But here's the thing. Every time it starts reaching the end, it goes back and begins appearing at the bottom. The way we fix this is on the texture settings, the wrap mode set it to clamp. This way it doesn't repeat. Which also means we need to find that sweet spot on the main text offset on the X to see where it starts and where it ends. Right? Looking good. If you see some artifacts, sometimes it helps to shrink a little bit this texture and export it again and replace it. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. You can also try to export with a black background, in case you have too many artifacts. So now that we have all of these elements, we have achieved the point where it could be awesome if we could animate this value, right? And it's fairly simple here in VFX Graph. All we need is a sample curve. We have the curve and then the time. For the time, it's essentially the age over lifetime. This node represents the set lifetime from 0 to 1, normalized. And this curve plays a very important role when animating this. It can give very different feelings. Let's for example use this one for now and slightly push the first handle up like this. Now if you connect this directly to the X of the main text offset and play this, this is what we get. It starts right in the middle because the texture is in the middle of the UVs. So we kind of need to remap these values. We kind of need to say that hey, the zeros is going to be different and the ones are going to be a different value as well. On the new range minimum, let me disconnect this again. We want to see first where does it start. It should be more or less at minus 0 0.8. Let me just play and pause this. Okay, so minus 0 0.8 is where it starts, yes indeed, and then it goes all the way to 0 0.8 positive. Here we go, let's connect this to the X, and now if we test this, we should get a very interesting result. Here we go, looking very, very nice. You see that in the beginning it, it's a little bit slower and then it goes faster. That's thanks to the curve. The curve plays a very important role. You can get very different feelings. I would recommend you to test it out just to play a little bit with that. But that's essentially it. That's the basic on how to create some curvy paths. Now, I'm just going to add, for example, a bright green. Awesome. By the way, I have a global volume on my scene with bloom. That's why it's glowing. And then as a final exercise, it would be very nice if we could have like a mirror of this, right? So up here on the count, Instead of one, we want to say it's two, and they are essentially overlapped. So how do we say that one of these particles, one of these paths has zero rotation on the Z and the other has 180? First, we can use a branch. If it is true, it can be zero. 
and if it's false it can be 180. Then there is this get attribute and VFX graph will show you attributes of each particle. There is this one which is spawn index. With that one you can compare this and say if it is equal to zero. So we essentially want to separate the evens from the odds. We can achieve that with the model node where essentially it divides the first input by the second input and calculates the remainder. For example, any even number divided by 2 will always have a remainder of 0. That's how you separate evens from odds. And that's how you can achieve this. Where we have one particle that doesn't have rotation and the other one it's 180 degrees and we create this very cool mirror effect. So that's essentially it guys. Obviously I went a few extra steps and created a few more they are all available on my Patreon's page, where you will also get plenty of other projects that you can play with and use in your games. Links below. I want to say thank you to each patron that supported me last month. And as usual, a quick shout out to the top tier patrons, which are Alberto Sageres, Alexei, Alan Alstead, Aviad Tobali, Cybercradle, Daniel Schmidt, Deluxe Adu, Dayaku, Diag Marcos, Lua Alma, Dripple, Ed Terima, Frosty40, Grub Lab, Jared Billy, Jonathan Carlson, Casey Miller, Cantel Sversfer, Leon Holt, Matt Moran, Mike Bell, Mike Young, Moops Da, Oitsk, Pierre Mario Roux, Pradip Sen, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, RVR, Sean Aguilar, Spence, Stefani Krasnowski, Tin, Travis McCollum, very Suta, Whatever Marta, Will Pullion, Bijina Seru, To Nakato, Xian Pianling, and Min Jae Kim. So thank you all very much for watching and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye!